Of course, the guys will be back again next week with more news from across the country. Most viewers will know of Terry Ryder, who's forged a name for himself by bucking the trends of property experts and helping us to understand more about what makes an area a hotspot. Like me, Terry doesn't subscribe to the now disproven theory that you have to buy in the CBD of a capital city. And this week we talked more about where you should buy. I think there's four major reasons why um, people should be focusing more on the regions. It starts with uh, the stimulus spending in the Kevin Rudd Prime Ministership, which is still filtering through local economies. Uh, then we have the fact that um, Julia Gillard now governs with the support of independents who have dictated their support is dependent on more money being tipped into regions. We also have the, the revival of the resources boom, which is going to impact most directly on regional areas. And finally, we have state governments pouring more resources into regional areas um, partly to take pressure off the capital cities. That's certainly true in South East Queensland where there's a lot of population growth and infrastructure is constantly under pressure. So the Queensland Government has, has said we're going to pour more resources into key regional centres like Townsville to try and take some of the pressure off South East Queensland. Western Australia is putting a lot of their resources into regional areas in the Pilbara for example but elsewhere also in Western Australia because the main coalition partner is the National Party and the condition of their support for the Liberal Party government is that more money gets tipped into their jurisdiction which is the regional areas. Also uh, Victoria is now and similar to Queensland trying to take pressure off Melbourne by putting more resources into places like Geelong and Bendigo and Ballarat. Somebody's looking to be able to find an area that is going to become a hotspot. What are some of the most basic things that they need to look for in that area to indicate that there's a chance of that happening? I think that people need to look to for areas that have multiple factors in play. I call them creator categories, events or circumstances which um, create future hotspots. Some of those include transport infrastructure, which I think is one, one of the big creators of um, outperformance in real estate areas. A new motorway link, a new bridge, a new rail link or an upgrading of those links can um, revolutionise the appeal of a region and one that springs instantly to mind is Seaford in <coughs> the southern seaside areas of Adelaide which has two major pieces of infrastructure, an extension of a rail line and an upgrading of the motorway, the Southern Expressway and suddenly investors are flocking to buy in Seaford because it's, it has been a, a sleepy little seaside town quite affordable and now suddenly it's appeal because it's been brought closer to Adelaide in terms of travel time. The Boomtown Syndrome can impact quite dramatically on uh, regional areas. Gladstone in Queensland is a wonderful example where there are uh, four massive uh, LNG projects totalling investment of $70 billion uh, to be established there plus a $5 billion expansion of the export port, uh, also a $2 billion steel mill. Those kinds of factors creating tens of thousands of jobs in construction and many thousands of jobs long term, also big drivers obviously of demand for real estate. So Terry, we could probably look all around Australia and find plenty of examples from when perhaps you and I were younger of areas where our parents probably told us not to go there because they were dangerous or they were from the wrong side of town. And today they're those very areas that are the places that people want to live. Absolutely, and the best example that springs to my mind is the place where I lived in uh, Brisbane before I left Brisbane. Um, and that was uh, the Balimba Balmoral area, which is inner city Brisbane, um, borders the river. Fantastic real estate, but it was overlooked for a long time. And when I lived there, it was um, the, the main shopping strip, Oxford Street, was a very um, unattractive part of Brisbane. A lot of empty shops, a very rough hotel, a cinema that was almost falling down. But now it's one of the trendiest cafe culture places in all of Brisbane and uh, the real estate around it has just exploded in value because it became discovered. There were a few catalysts and one fed off the other and it's a classic ugly duckling tale where the, the ugly duckling turned into a beautiful real estate swan. <laughs>